Hi there. This is Ms. Townsend and I love math. Welcome to Math with Ms. Townsend. So this video is for the grade 10 academic students who are looking through their summative questions and this is the solution to question number four. So here's that question. It says draw the rhombus with vertices at u, v, w, and x. So here they are, u, v, w, x. And I connected them with a ruler and there's my rhombus. So again, that definitely looks like a rhombus because it's a parallelogram in which all sides are the same length. So that was easy. Now part B. It says verify that joining the midpoints called A, B, C, and D. So if I join the midpoints of adjacent sides of this rhombus, I should get a rectangle. Okay, so let's take this step by step. I obviously need the midpoint. So midpoint, 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 and midpoint. There's my midpoints. So it says if I join the midpoints of adjacent sides. So my midpoints, let's give them a name. They're called A, B, C, and D. And if I join adjacent midpoints, so A is adjacent to B and D, but you can see that A is opposite C, so don't, don't join those. Um, D, I've already joined it there, got to join it to C, and then of course this one. So again, verify that joining the midpoints of the adjacent sides, so that's what I've done, verify that I produced a rectangle. Well, it certainly looks like a rectangle, even my really quick rough sketch here. But of course, you can't answer a question by saying, yep, sort of looks like a rectangle. We're going to have to verify using mathematics and algebra. So in order to verify that it's a rectangle, we have to remember what a rectangle is using its mathematical definition. So what is a rectangle? Well, first and foremost, a rectangle is a parallelogram. So it's a special type of parallelogram, but it's a parallelogram. So let's talk about what a parallelogram is. So a parallelogram is a four-sided shape in which opposite sides like AD and BC are parallel and the same length. So I need to verify that AD and BC are parallel and the same length. So I need to make sure that AD is parallel to BC and I need to make sure that the length of AD is equal to the length of BC. Now, I have to make sure that that's true for all the sides of my parallelogram. So in addition to ADBC, I'm going to have to do the same checks for AB and DC. So again, I'm going to have to make sure that AB is parallel to DC, and I'm going to have to check that the length of AB is this is the length of DC. Now, if I do these four checks, I'll know for sure that this shape is a parallelogram, but I wanted to make sure that it was a rectangle. So the final thing you need to check, if you know for sure that you have a parallelogram, the final check you have to do is that one of these corners is a right angle. So it doesn't matter which one, because if these four things are true, then one 90 degree angle instantly means that they're all 90 degree angles because you've got parallel lines that are the same length. So I need to make sure that one angle is 90 degrees. So I'll do AB perpendicular. Hopefully you know the symbol. I have to check that AB is perpendicular to AD. And if I check these five things, then I can say that I have algebraically, mathematically verified that I have a rectangle. Okay, so five little steps. Well, before we do any of these things, I obviously need to know where is point A? and where is B, and where is C, and where is D. So in other words, the first step of this question is to find the midpoints. And again, you're not going to do that by eyeballing your graph. That's not good enough. You're going to have to do it mathematically. So let's do it. So here again, I've drawn the sketch just so we have it nice and neat with A, B, C, and D. Here's my formula for midpoint, which you've probably memorized. And again, here I've just written down for us the coordinates of u, v, w, x, so they're right in front of us. So we have four pieces of math to do. Let's get to it. Midpoint of u, v is. So x1 plus x2 divided by 2, y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So that gives me negative 8 over 2 and 7 over 2, and negative 8 over 2 is negative 4 can't reduce 7 over 2, so I leave it. And that's the point that we called point A. 
So there's point A. So let's do one more together. Let's do the midpoint of VW. So VW, so X1 plus Y1 over 2. Sorry, X1 plus X2. So X1 plus X2 over 2. And then Y1 plus Y2 over 2. So Y1 and Y2. OK. So that gives me negative 5 over 2 and 4 over 2. And negative 5 over 2 doesn't reduce, so I leave it. But 4 over 2 is just 2. And again, this was the point that we called B. So you would keep going and find the midpoint of Wx, call that C. Find the midpoint of Ux and call that D. So on this page, here's all the answers you should get. A and B we did together. C and D, you would hopefully press pause and make sure you get these values for C and D. So now that I know the coordinates of A, B, C, and D, I really don't need this blue rhombus anymore. But, you know, it's kind of a nice picture, so let's leave it. So here is that blue rhombus, but I'm interested in the red rectangle. Now, again, I needed to show five things. Um, included amongst those five things were length of sides. I need to show that AD is the same length as BC. And I need to show that AB is the same length as DC. So to find the length of a line, you use the distance formula because I'm looking for the distance between two points. So it doesn't really matter where we start. Um, let's start with AB because I like, I don't know, the alphabet, I guess. <laughs> so there's my formula. You have it memorized, I'm sure of it. Let's use it. So X2 minus X1. So negative five over two minus negative four all squared, plus y2 minus y1. So 2 minus 7 over 2, all squared. So don't let those fractions bother you. Um, what do I have? I have negative 5 over 2, minus a negative. We know that that means plus. And 4, if I want to add 4 to a fraction, I actually need to get a common denominator. So instead of 4, I'm going to write 8 over 2 because that gives me a common denominator, and 8 over 2 is the exact same value as 4. In the second bracket, I need to do the same sort of thing. I'm doing 2 subtract 7 over 2, but I know to do subtract, I need to get a common denominator. So instead of 2, I'm going to use 4 over 2. And then 7 over 2, square it. Good. So now I can do the addition here. I know the denominator is 2. Negative 5 plus 8 is 3 over 2. Here, again, denominator 2. 4 take away 7 is negative 3 over 2. And I can square it. So now that I've dealt with B in Bedmas, I've dealt with the brackets. Now I can do this exponent. So 3 squared is 9. 2 squared is 4. Negative 3 squared is 9. 2 squared is 4. Now... I'm finally ready to add. 9 plus 9 is 18, and the denominator is 4. So let's stop right here for just a moment. And I'm just going to clean up my communication. This is a really picky thing, but it's an important thing. This square root sign, it's kind of not far enough down on my page because it doesn't really look like it necessarily includes that 4. So make sure that your square root sign very clearly includes everything. So not only is this part down enough, but this part is over enough. Okay, now that's not really why I paused here. The reason why I wanted to pause here is I wanted to say that your teacher might want you to write here and get a decimal. And that's fine. If you were to punch all this into your calculator, you would get 2.12 units, which is a good answer. But I'm going to keep going and do something a little more mathematical, algebraic, because maybe this is what your teacher wants instead, especially because, you know, if you're going on to 11U or maybe grade 12 math, you need to be able to do something other than just punch it into your calculator. <clears throat> so here's what you can keep doing algebraically. First of all, this square root sign affects both the numerator and the denominator. So I'm going to separate it and show it affecting the numerator and the denominator. And the reason why I did that is because, well, wow, I know what the square root of 4 is. The square root of 4 is 2. 
So already I have part of my answer is not square rooted. And this is also something important in math called um, rationalizing the denominator. Um, but let's keep going because root 18, there's also math I can do to simplify root 18. And again, I don't know if your teacher has talked about this. If not, don't worry. It's just a good little lesson here and something important that you'll uh, maybe appreciate next year. In order to rationalize a radical, so reduce or simplify a square root, you need to have the following list of numbers really well memorized. 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared, 7 squared, etc. Now, by all means, you can certainly write them down the way I just did, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared. Um, and what I need to do is I need to figure out if any of these evenly divide into 18. And if more than one does, then I want the biggest one. So I know that 9 times 2 is 18. So that's the one that I want. I want 9 times 2. So instead of root 18, I write root 9 times 2. Same thing as 18, right? So now I can separate root 9 from root 2 because they're multiplied. You couldn't do it if they were added. But because they're multiplied, I can say square root 9 times square root 2. And of course, what's the square root of 9? It's 3. So if I fully simplify, this is my answer. It's, oops, I didn't like that. Let's try that again. Square root of 9 is 3 times the square root of 2 over 2. So 3 times root 2 over 2. This answer here is the fully simplified answer to what is the length of AB. And if you punch this into your calculator, you're still going to get 2.12. It's just that this is the mathematically greatest answer you could give. And again, it all depends on what your teacher expects of you at this point. So that's the length of AB. So what would you do now? So now you would find the length of DC using the exact same process. So I'm running out of time, so I'm not going to find the length of DC. Um, but let's find the length of AD uh, just to practice maybe one more time and also to see what happens when I try to reduce that radical. So let's find the length of AD together. So the length of AD is the square root of, so negative 13 over 2 minus negative 4 squared. So that was x2 minus x1 plus y2 minus y1. So y2 minus y1. OK. So again, just like before, I'm going to have to get common denominators. So minus a negative is plus, and 4 is just 8 over 2. Again, common denominator, 1 is 2 over 2 minus 7 over 2, all squared. So do that math. Denominator is 2. Negative 13 plus 8 is negative 5. 2 take away 7 is negative 5. And the denom denominators don't change when you do that. Now I can finally square those brackets. 5 times 5 is the same as negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. 2 squared is 4. And again, negative 5 times negative 5, 2 times 2, oops, is 4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. So denominator is 4. 25 plus 25 is 50. So again, at this point, what does your teacher want you to do? If they want you to turn it into a decimal, that's great. Go for it. I'm going to show you the other method. So again, root 50 on top, root 4 on the bottom, and we know that root 4 is 2. Now, looking at root 50, 50 is equal to 25 times 2. And 25 is a perfect square, so 25 times 2, separate that into root 25 times root 2, and then what is the square root of 25? Well, it's 5. So there is the perfect, fully mathematically done answer for the length of AD. So I'm going to have to stop the video here, so we'll finish this in video number 2 for question 4. four.